This is 6.5 Media in the booth. We're at HPE Barcelona 2025. And I'm Will Townsend. Joining me is Miles Davis from HPE. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, networking. Yeah. Yeah. So, Miles, lots of exciting announcements going on this week. I understand that the event sold out for the first time. Right? That's right. The yeah. event sold out. I think all the excitement around uh, Juniper HPE coming together is driving yeah. people uh, into the into the place and making a real kind of buzz about and, uh, everything that's I mean, going I, on. I can totally feel it myself. So let me ask you that question. Um, how is the HPE Aruba and Juniper integration going? I think it's going really great. The teams have come together in a way in which uh, being through previous transactions like this, yeah. uh, we've been able to accelerate things to a level in which I, I've never really seen play out in the market. And I think it's both because of the way in which we uh, think about the development of the software. It's also about just uh, the nature of the way that we built the platforms and the fact that we both thought about this in a microservices kind of architecture as we build our clouds, allowing us to be able to share some of this intellectual property that yeah. we both had before the acquisition closed. Yeah. And from my perspective, it represents two very, very strong and capable networking solution providers coming together, creating a very viable alternative to other offerings in the market. From your perspective, what do you see as Aruba strengths relative to Juniper strengths? Good question. So when I think about what Juniper missed came in with is the capabilities around AI ops and being built from cloud kind of ground up. Uh, those uh, benefits in the platform really, really bring these kind of outcomes to customers that we haven't seen in the market before. On the Aruba side, the strength that we've had is we've got this really strong customer base that understands uh, our portfolio and understands uh, how to build networks at really large scales. And what's exciting about the central platform itself too is that we thought about it as the kind of methodology in which we develop to be cloud as well as VPC as well as on-prem. So they each bring their kind of unique capabilities to the table in which uh, I think makes for a great overlap or yep. a, a great overlap as well as a great cross section, maybe yep. is the better word for our customers. I agree. And I think just to add to that, from my perspective, what Juniper brings from a service provider perspective, I think is amazing. It strengthens what HPE has been focused on and now HPE extending that into private 5G with, with the Appinet acquisition and what you're doing there. And then I also like, Appstra in the integration with OpsRamp over time to drive a, a stronger observability platform that's going to do amazing things from my perspective for network insurance. Yep. Right? Yeah. I really like the, the complementary nature of the roadmaps and how they're coming together. And to your point, um, very early on in Aruba's journey with AI Ops, um, actually, I spent time with the team when, when Kurti was still the CEO and um, wrote a paper about uh, the Edge Services platform. And that was really Aruba's first sort of you know, toe in the water with AI ops. And then you look at what Juniper's done with Mist, uh, and it's simply amazing. And, and combining those two, I think it's gonna be really, really powerful. And so during the keynote, Rami talked about that cross-pollinization. Yep. So I'm hoping, Miles, that we can spend a little bit of time and talk about where should we see the fairy dust be sprinkled on Aruba Central and the Aruba Central fairy dust sprinkled on, on this. Yeah. It, what's really interesting is that because of the way we built these platforms yeah. uh, in essentially microservices slash just container based in a very cloud native kind of way, it's we've been able to accelerate that process of actually sharing stuff. So it's easier to integrate, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like even as we go into tomorrow's demos and others, what customers are going to see is they're going to see things like the large experience model, which the MIST team built out of saying, hey, let's take all this data that we have around Teams, let's have all this data around Zoom, mm -hmm. cross-section that with all the network telemetry we have so that we can predictively determine based on the network telemetry how those collaboration apps might be working. Sure. Well, that model that they built 
and all that telemetry, yeah. all we had to do was repipe that into what we did in Central, and boom, wow. we have you know that kind of shared. Yeah. Other areas where we've seen a lot of collaboration is uh, NIST had done their thing around Marvis CI and a conversational interface. Rami likes to say crushing those trouble tickets, right? That's right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, what we launched in Discover Las Vegas uh, and started talking about was our agentic engine under the kind of brand of Copilot. Yeah. Uh, when we came together as a team, we saw an immediate opportunity and we executed on that immediate opportunity to actually bring over yeah. some of that agentic capability into the MIST platform, right. enhancing what they had already been doing with the conversational interface. Sure. And those are things in which, from a shipping perspective, customers are seeing like today. It's happening like, today. In production. And that's amazing clouds. given the acquisition just closed. Like yeah. how many months ago? Yeah, like three or four months. Yeah. The teams are already working together. Right. And it's not only exciting because we can take what we already had on the truck and be able to, you know, kind of bring them uh, into each other, but also because as we kind of go forward, I mentioned about that culture of cloud native and, and thinking about how to develop in a way in which uh, we can easily move things. Sure. We've got this kind of mantra internally now where it's develop once, deploy twice. Sure. And between the large experience model, LEM, and our agentic uh, capabilities that we brought over from Central, that's actually the first place in which we took that approach. Sure. We adapted our, our development process to go accomplish that. But as we go forward, that's gonna be the way in which we continue to make intellectual property and innovation sure. is develop it in one place with one team, deploy it into two different clouds. Right, I mean, and that's the most efficient way to, to engage engineering resources <laughs> and to scale innovation and um, in that, all of that effort, from my perspective, is fueling the company's vision for a self-driving network. And there's a lot of buzz, I think, just generally in the industry about this. I think it goes all the way back to intent-based networking. And we never quite got there, from my perspective, because the missing element was like AI ops and AI and yep. the maturity of that. Um, so I'm curious, Miles, from, from your perspective, how do you define a self-driving network and can you provide an example yeah. of something that's real today? Yeah, I, to me, self-driving network is the type of operational model in which instead of uh, network operators and engineers having to rotely go in and do a bunch of actions in which you know, we could all uh, just, uh, I guess, do uh, based on on reaction, I don't know the best way to say it, but yeah. but it's so practice that we just know how to do it. Why are we intelligent humans having to do those things? Sure. Why don't we give that over yeah. to a network that can self drive, just like we've done those tasks for cars and yeah. planes and, and everything the, else? The value, I think, from from that perspective, is that frees up operational teams to provide more value added support for the for the lines That's of right. business that are supported. Right? That's right. Yeah. yeah, and get out of the task of these kind of rote you know, repetitive things in which we can yeah. take away. The kind of examples that we've actually implemented in the platform, this isn't imaginary, you know, uh, uh, use cases in which customers aren't using. These are active features in the platforms, is stuck clients, whether they be wired or wireless, from time to time, whether based on the client stack or just the client stack interaction to the network stack interaction, mm -hmm. you get these situations where the, the client isn't transmitting data anymore. Right. Well, based on the telemetry that we have in the network, yeah. we can reset buys or bounce ports or reset uh, the chipsets and APs very uh, uh, quickly to be able to react to those situations mm -hmm. and then take a task away from a network engineer yeah. that has many more important things to go do. Right. So these are like real value adds for customers that need to just get moving on, like you said, line of business tasks sure. or whatever else the case may be yeah. and can put away these tasks that really aren't all that important. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, it's a game changer. Yeah. You know, I don't think anyone enjoys mundane, you know, CLI buried, you know, kind of hunt and peck type scenarios, but I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really blown away by just what the team has accomplished just in a short amount of time. But 
here's my million dollar question for you, Miles. Like, what excites you the most? If we look out a year from now, what, I mean, and of course, you can't disclose anything that's under NDA or on the roadmap, but yep. what excites you the most about the combination of Juniper and, and HPE or Ruby? I think what's most exciting about the year forward for us is getting to show customers that we are one team coming together, yeah. that this strategy that we're taking up of leveraging the intellectual property across both portfolios and really driving that on both platforms is a reality, sure. right? Um, it's been really exciting to uh, be able to come to bear with the AI ops capabilities that we had on the Aruba side, but to be able to have that plethora of uh, capabilities that the Juniper side brought as well is just mind boggling and exciting. I'm also really pumped for the type of outcomes that we'll be able to deliver to customers, right? I think we're in a pivotal point in which AI is becoming a non-optional aspect of how the network gets operated. And I've seen it play out just in conversations that we've had uh, with different customers to say, this used to be something that took me, you know, 12 hours to go solve. Yeah. And now I'm doing this in 30 minutes. Well, I, what I like to imagine is what can be done with that other 11 and a half hours right. in our networks with all the different data and telemetry and whatever else. That's those customer outcomes is what really, really excites me. Yeah, and you know, and at the end of the day, modern AI is only as good as the data that you can move around, whether it's a cloud-hosted large language model, whether it's a smaller language model on an AI-enabled device. Um, network is important, and you know, and, and that's what I really appreciate about Antonio's vision and what the company is executing on. It's making networking sexy again. Oh yeah. You know, to quote Justin Timberlake. <laughs> yep. No, it, it, that has been a really exciting aspect as well. Like just thinking from a network engineer's kind of perspective is getting back into a world where it's not about, you know, seven layers of, of the OSI model. Right. I mean, you still have to know those things and it's still important, but it's really reinvigorated me to be able to come into a kind of landscape of of uh, data analysis and other things in which wasn't sure. really in our vocabulary 10 years ago yeah. as network operators and network engineers. Yeah. 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 Well, Miles, thanks for taking the time. Uh, it's been a great conversation. This is Will Townsend with Six Five Media at HPE Discover Barcelona 2025. Stay tuned for more content coming soon.